Hi everyone and happy Wednesday! During last week's video, I mentioned that I had chosen stillness as my word for this year. And so that was the inspiration for this week's painting. I'm going to paint an image that for me represents stillness. When I was living in New Brunswick, I was lucky enough to have a pond in front of my house and in that pond, in the summertime, there were water lilies. As someone who is passionate about gardening, I love flowers and oddly enough, I really don't paint flowers very often. I don't know why that is, um, mostly I guess it's because I, I prefer to paint in abstract um, ways. <laughs> and today's painting is not really going to be abstract, I think, hopefully. <laughs> uh, you'll be able to recognize a water lily or a lotus or something that resembles one of the two <laughs> when I'm done. Um, and so. I am attempting to paint a flower. I'm, as you know, not really going to aim for realism. I am hoping that it will resemble um, these flowers that I love so much and that I used to admire in the pond in front of my house. Um, but again, they're not going to be realistic. They're going to be water lilies or lotus flowers a la Gabrielle. <laughs> Oh, hopefully this makes sense and hopefully you'll enjoy watching the process. I started off my process by applying a more pigmented wash of color on the bottom of my painting and then I sort of swept the color upwards trying to make it lighter as I kept going up. And then I added coarse grain salt at the very bottom and now I'm sprinkling some fine grain table salt. Most of the time after I've added my salt to my paper, I like to just let it all dry and walk away. But sometimes, especially when I'm working with coarse grain salt, I like to come in and dab some more pigment in between the, the grains of salt. And you'll see after it dries that these um, little pieces of, well, um, bigger pieces of salt, I guess I should say, because they're bigger than the ones on the top of the painting, um, they do leave some really special marks. And I find that when I add more pigment, it makes these marks even more apparent. Um, so I like to do this. I, I always like to experiment. I do often repeat certain skills or, or tools or, um, or marks or whatever in my paintings, but I also like to experiment a lot. And when I'm experimenting, of course, that's how I learn. So I, I first tried doing this quite a long time ago in one of my first paintings. When I think my first year in my YouTube channel, I painted a moon and uh, I was able to create that cratered look in the moon by using coarse grain salt and doing what I'm doing right now. Um, and so I want to create something special at the bottom of my pond, if you will. Usually a pond I think mostly has mud. <laughs> and I think typically that's where uh, water lilies thrive. They, they thrive in mud, like they grow out of there. And um, that's not really what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make it a little bit different because I want to make it mine and I want to make it uh, a little special. So I'm going to create some rocks at the very bottom. You have seen me do this before and I want those rocks to look special and different. And so I think dropping this uh, more pigmented paint in my grains of salt will help to do that. 
Once I'm done adding these little droplets of paint, I will let all of it dry. I'll remove the salt once it's all dry. And then I'll do a little sketch of my water lily and some lily pads on uh, what I will consider to be the surface of my water. Um, initially, of course, my intention was for you to watch me sketching this lily pad, but as per usual, when I get very excited about a project, sometimes I am so in the moment that I forgot to turn on my camera. So my apologies, but you will see at least my line drawing and uh, hopefully this will just show you that it's a very simple lily and lily pads. It's nothing complicated and um, yeah, hopefully that'll give you a starting point at least. The effects of the salt after everything has dried always is mind-blowing to me. I, I mean, all I have to do is sprinkle a little bit of salt on paper and I get all these really beautiful marks. And so I always try to play with that and use that to my advantage in my paintings. And uh, I think in this case it's going to help me create something really beautiful from bottom to top. <laughs> Um, but I also, even though I created these textures and these marks with the salt, I, I do like to intensify my paints and I, I tend to layer a lot as I go along. Now I'm going to be dropping some paint in to my flower and I thought it would be nice if I just initially uh, used the wet brush to add water to my flower and then to just drop the paint in. There's something about that that I really enjoy. Um, and I think it's one of the things that helps keep me in the moment of painting and not thinking about anything else but what I'm doing in this very moment. There's something very soothing and calming about watching that paint as it spreads into the water. And I really enjoy that part of the painting process. So I like to do that and then I, I like to come in also and just add a little bit more pigment everywhere else. I'll repeat what I just did but I wanted to um, get the process started off uh, by adding a little bit of color and then I'll come in and drop in a little bit more color a little bit later. Normally when I'm adding a color like this um, gold, green gold for instance, next to a color that's still wet like this um, Darn it, I don't remember the name of the color. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm not a very good sales rep, am I? I'm not, <laughs> which is why I'm not a sales rep. <laughs> um, I will let you know what the name of that color is. I'll, I, I, as I always do, I'll put it in the video description and, I, and I'm sorry, I can't remember it off the top of my head. These are new paints I'm, I'm painting with by M. Graham. I'm still sort of trying to make up my mind about the paints because I do find that there's a lot of binding medium in the tube and it, it tends to make the paints a little bit globby but I really really love the pigments or the, the colors of the paints and so I'm, I'm wanting to work with them more. So anyway, if you're interested in finding out what these colors are that I'm using, I will have them in my video description. So what I was saying was that I typically don't like to add colors that are very different um, especially complementary colors next to each other when they're still wet because they will definitely bleed into each other and sometimes that can create mud. However, the green gold has a tendency to sort of um, do something really beautiful when it spreads into other paint. It sort of pushes the other pigment a little bit and it tends to create beautiful, beautiful effects. I didn't want to go overboard with this because I do want the integrity of my lily to be this beautiful magenta-like color. Um, but, you know, I did want to see if I could add a little bit of that green gold and see if I could create something that I liked. It seeped a little bit into the, the magenta, seeped into my green gold uh, on the right side of the painting, but I'm not overly concerned with this. So as I'm painting here, I'm sure you've noticed, I'm not doing anything 
amazing. <laughs> I'm creating very, very simple shapes. They, you know, it's kind of one of those things where oftentimes when I'm doing something like this, the initial part of the process, there's really moments where I'm like questioning what I'm doing and I'm wondering if I'm, you know, on the right track. And it's kind of, I've talked about this before, it's, it's that sort of ugly phase of the process where I'm really not necessarily liking what I'm seeing, but I know that it's just one very short part of the process and that eventually as I keep going on and building up my layers and then adding some pen work that the whole piece will start to make sense in the end. But it really is a journey and we have to remember that sometimes we want so much for a painting to just be done that we're so focused on getting to the final result but the rest of the journey every single little step you take to get to the final result is is important if not more important than the final result because that's where mindfulness is it's being in the present moment and enjoying each and every step you're taking along the way So right now I'm coming in with a clean wet brush and I'm adding water to my petals and then I'm going to be dropping some of this color into the bottom parts of my petals and I'm, I'm wanting to have this paint spread sadly because of the lighting um, up above there's a lot of reflection and you're not seeing really what I'm seeing here in my studio. Once it dries, you'll have a better um, idea of what it is I'm doing. I'm basically adding water to the whole petal and then I'm just dropping some pigment in the bottom part of the petal. So because the rest of the petal is wet, that water um, through osmosis or I think capillary action. <laughs> Science is very far in my background. Um, <laughs> The water is going to spread, um, not the water, sorry, the paint is going to spread. And so it's going to be a little bit more faded the further it goes away from where I drop the, the pigment. And I, I really like that effect. So I'm going to try to do this in um, most of the petals, not all the petals, because I don't want the petals to all look exactly the same. And um, because I'm doing this and, it's, I, and I'm trying to a certain degree to control what it is I'm doing, I'm not adding water to the whole entire flower because if I did that then the pigment would have a tendency to spread everywhere and I don't really want that to happen so what I'm doing is I'm doing a few petals at a time I'm letting them dry and then I'm going in and, and doing it doing the same exact few steps to my other petals
And to create this painting, before I even started my process, I looked at a number of different uh, water lily and lotus flower pictures on the internet just to give me a little bit of guidance because um, I wanted to see what they look like no, not only on the surface but I also wanted to see what they look like under the surface of the water. And so this is what um, guided me, if you will, to, to create what I did create here on uh, the underside of my water lily. Uh, is it an exact representation of what is out there in nature? Probably not, you know. <laughs> That's how I work. I, I, I like to take inspiration from something and then I make it my own. So I'm working here and I'm adding uh, elements trying to make this look um, a way that I find it visually appealing. But I'm not always 100% sure what I'm going to do next in a painting. And this is one of those instances now where I'm like, hmm, what should I do next? So when I get to a point where I'm not 100% sure what to do next, I do the easiest thing that comes to mind. And for me, that's starting to work with the bottom part of the painting because I knew from the get-go that I wanted to have some rocks at the bottom of my pond. And that's why I added this coarse grain salt um, to the bottom of my painting. So now it's easy for me to come in and start creating these shapes with my fountain pen. It's an easy way for me to sort of get unstuck, to keep myself moving in my process. And as I'm going along, oftentimes the next idea comes right, right to me. <laughs> it, it seems like, you know, I'm stuck for a little bit. And as soon as I just keep moving and not think about what I'm doing too much, and I just kind of let my process unfold, the way I want it to unfold, then the ideas come. And so I want to encourage you to, to try to do something like this when you're painting. If you find yourself in a place in your painting process where you're not really sure what to do next, think of the next easiest step that you could do and start doing that. And as you're working on that and the elements are starting to be added to your painting, another idea will come. At least that's how it works for me, and I think that's how it could work for you as well. The big idea is to not stop, because sometimes when we get stuck, we walk away, which can be helpful also. Sometimes if we're working on something for too long, walking away can also be helpful. But giving up won't be helpful. That's all I'm trying to say, I guess. <laughs> is that walking is a, walking away temporarily, just to, you know, stretch your legs, get some water, take a break, that's good. It can help refresh your eyes and, and help you figure out what you're going to do next. But if you give up, you'll never figure out what you could have done next. And so it's, it's uh, all about a balance, keeping a balance between doing, taking some breaks, having um, a chance to refresh your eyes and come back to your painting when you're feeling ready to tackle the next step. So as I was working on my little rocks at the bottom of my pond, I found that adding the contrast of the black ink surrounding my rocks really made them pop. And so this gave me the idea that maybe the next thing I should do is do the same thing with the stem of my flower and the uh, lily pads that are uh, growing underwater and coming up from the from the bottom of the pond ground um, and it's an interesting thing when you have paint on paper especially watercolor because it tends to dry much lighter than it is when you first apply it it's it's sort of lacking in contrast and that's what I'm trying to say is what is missing and maybe what the next best step could be 
often has to do with finding a way to add contrast to your painting. If you're not 100% sure, that's usually a good way to keep the process going is to find ways where you can add some contrast in your painting. Some value contrast always goes a really long way. I've had my Cuddalola dotting pen for a little over a month now and I'm still in love. <laughs> this pen is really helping my arm. I, you know, I, my wrist does not get nearly as um, painful as it used to get and uh, they're really, it is such a joy to use this pen. <laughs> I use it a lot and I really love it and I have some good news because I know some people were looking for ink cartridges online and they were sort of concerned that they weren't able to buy replacement cartridges for the pen and, and I can completely understand it would definitely be uh, worrisome to buy a product and then not be able to continue using it because the thing you need to use it is no longer in, <laughs> in stock. Um, so I had contacted the Cuddalola um, company to ask them when they were expecting the product to come back into stock and they finally replied to me today and I was super happy to hear that they are planning on replenishing their stocks on Amazon in particular and probably on their website as well. I would imagine their website may be faster than on Amazon. I'm not sure how they work. Um, but they are replen replenishing their stocks on Amazon this month. And so there are more ink cartridge cartridges coming uh, for the pen. And more exciting news, they have some new um, different colored acrylic cartridges. So it's uh, it's supposed to be used with the Cuddaloa pen. I have seen it online. I wasn't 100% sure uh, whether or not it would be worth me looking into this. But I, um, so anyway, the company was kind enough because I mentioned that I have talked about their product on my YouTube channel. They were kind enough to offer to send me this product. And so I haven't received it yet. Uh, I am very curious to try it because it's supposed to be something that you can use not only on paper, but you can use it on canvas. You can use it on a multitude of different surfaces because it is acrylic paint. And where I'm usually m using my Cuddalola dotting pen mostly for stippling um, and doing things on my painting after I've finished adding my paint, I, I think working on my on top of my watercolors, uh, my mixed media projects, I think that might be something that could be really cool to use. So I'm looking forward to having a chance to give it a try. And of course, when I do give it a try, I'll try to make a video using these uh, new acrylic ink or acrylic paint cartridges to see how they work with the pen uh, but I'm super excited to, to just let you know I guess for now that the ink cartridges for the pen the black ink cartridges are coming back they are not going to stop selling them and uh, you should soon be able to find more cartridges on Amazon.
Here I'm going to be working on adding some blue pearl to the petal of my flower and I'm going to do this by using a micro mini brush and then I'm going to spread the paint with a damp um, filbert brush and eventually maybe also a round brush. Uh, it's not going to be very easy for you to see what I'm doing here because the colors are very light. The blue pearl is very light and of course the petals are not very dark colored either. And so when I'm spreading the paint and doing all this, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of what's happening. But I'm going to do the same thing to my rocks on the bottom and where they're a little bit darker, you will uh, more easily see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to I guess skip through most of this since you're not really going to be able to see a whole lot of what's going on and um, then I'll focus in on what's happening with the rocks on the bottom. It'll be much easier for you to see what's going on. When I create something in one area of my painting, I like to come and add it somewhere else in the painting because I want my painting to be very coherent. And so I thought it would be important to add some of this color to the bottom part of the painting just to, to spread it a little bit. And the fact that I'm uh, applying it in a sort of brushed, like lightly brushed way, it's almost like dry brushing in a sense, not exactly like dry brushing, but very similar to it. It's uh, not a, applying in a very thick way and it's, um, it's just enough that it's covering the surface of my little rocks, but it's, if you look at it from a certain angle, this color will also be pretty transparent so you can still see what's going on underneath and then it catches the light. And what I thought would be really cool about doing this is that it sort of mimics how the water or the rocks might catch the light from the sun even if they're at the bottom of the pond if the pond has relatively clear water <laughs> again this is not a muddy pond it's a little bit of a different type of pond but <laughs> it's my pond and i like it <laughs> um the the that little bit of uh, pearl blue is catching the light and making it look like the sun is reflecting on the rocks and I really like that and uh, I thought it would look really neat and I'm super happy I decided to do it because it does look really neat. I've decided to use a bit of my magic green to create a bit of a similar effect on the tips of the flower buds or leaf leaf buds or lily pad buds <laughs> that are rising to the surface 
And once I'm done adding it here, I think I'll also add it to the top of my lily pads as well. I was trying to figure out what the perfect pen would be to outline the tops of my lily pads and I couldn't make up my mind between my fountain pen and my extra fine tip um, pen and I felt like neither one would be the right pen. <laughs> and this pen here is probably the best because it's sort of an in-between to those two pens and so it's not going to create create a, a super fine line and it's not going to create a very dark line either and I, I felt like it was a, a very good happy medium. I want to outline my lily slightly. I don't want it to be you know a very dark outline but I do feel like it, it is lacking a bit of contrast and I, I think adding these light lines and maybe also some stippling, I'm going to see how I feel about that um that it would help the flowers stand out a little bit more because the bottom of the painting now has a lot of really nice um contrast and really interesting marks and that's looking really neat but the flower even though it's i think pretty with the um blue pearl it's lacking contrast and so it's sort of sitting relatively flat on the surface um, of the paper and I want it to stand out more so I think adding these lines will help and as I'm doing this I'm convincing myself that I probably should also try some light stippling around those petals as well. So I, I'm moving on to uh, using my dotting pen again and uh, since I'm working with this pen that I bought for myself <laughs> a little over a month ago like I said um, I wanted to mention something about product promotions I am an Amazon associate so that means that when um, any of you buy any of the products that I have in my video description links um, I get a small commission for you making the purchase the purchase of these products through my links um, it is a very small commission but I, I do have that in my video description because I think it's important for you to know um, that that I am getting a small something um, I also get contacted by a lot of different companies who want me to promote their products and I did one such thing last year and um, it was okay I, I'm glad I had the experience but then it hasn't really resulted in me using that product very much since I got the product it was very kind of the company to send me the product um, but of course they in exchange were getting a product review for me using their product uh, on my channel and so I get contacted by a lot of companies and I really appreciate that people are contacting me with these products but Oftentimes I get contacted from people who are representing products that I have, I'm, I'm not really sure I have a use for. Um, I'm trying to be polite about it. I guess um, I, I do appreciate that people are contacting me, but I'm trying to be a mindful consumer. And so when I'm working, um, if I'm talking about something on my channel, Usually if I'm talking about it, it's because it's something that I really like using and I feel comfortable telling you that I like the product. 
I don't feel like I have to do a company any favors and I don't think I would do that anyway. I don't think I did that when I did it the first time. But there is that kind of pressure that comes with having to present a product for someone and I, I really prefer not to have that kind of pressure on me. My creative process I, I really try to keep light and fun and I don't want my channel to become a promotional channel um, and maybe that's gonna upset some people and I'm not gonna have you know people wanting to watch my channel for whatever reason uh, and, and that's okay if that happens um, but my channel is a creative channel it's a channel where I try to encourage people to pick up their art supplies and to get painting because I find creativity very therapeutic and relaxing and I want to spread that I want people to be able to get up there and do that and sometimes in the process that means some of you might be curious about the products I'm using and I'm always happy to share the products that I like to use because if I like using them um, I think if you're trying to create the type of artwork I'm creating <laughs> that you might also enjoy using the products we're all different so you know there's never any pressure for anyone to buy anything and that's oftentimes why I don't talk about these things when I'm uh, doing my videos but I mentioned earlier that I'm gonna be getting these new ink cartridges by Cutalola and I'll probably talk about them in the video when I get the, the ink cartridges or the acrylic um, paint cartridges because there's a high likelihood that I am going to use that product. And like I mentioned before, I'm trying to be a mindful consumer. I don't want to just be receiving product after product after product because yay, it's fun to receive free stuff. I also am trying to be mindful of the environment and not cluttering my space. <laughs> Um, I love art supplies. I have a lot of art supplies, but I try to only have art supplies in my studio that I actually intend on using. So it's probably never going to happen if you look at my hands right now that I'm going to ever represent nail products. <laughs> I have been contacted by, you know, kind people who are just trying to do like me and they're trying to do make a living out of what they enjoy doing and I can't fault them for that. But I also don't want to be trying to present products to you and I don't really feel fit the fit my channel or or fit what it is I'm trying to accomplish here. So I guess what I'm trying to say at the at the end of the day is that I really only want to talk about products if I am gonna talk about products that are actually products that I use, that are products that I love, oftentimes, most of the time, in fact a hundred percent of the time except for that one time that someone sent me some paint I buy my own art supplies and so it, it's expensive but I feel good about talking about the supplies too because I paid for the supplies and if I like them then I you know I, I feel confident that I can talk about them and quote-unquote sort of promote them because I'm using them and I love them so anyway enough about that I hope that makes sense um, you know don't hesitate to contact me and ask questions if you have questions about the, this kind of stuff um, I was super happy that Cutalola was willing to offer me the cartridges I'm likely to use those cartridges and if there were ever another product that I might be likely um, to use then maybe I'd be open to something like that too but I do not want my my channel to become a place where it's like an, an ad the whole time you're here. I want this to be about creativity. I want this about us, um, this to be about us connecting and for us to be mindful in our creative process and uh, not worrying about things like that. Hopefully that makes sense.
Okay, so I am in the final stages of my painting process and I feel like um, I'm really happy with everything I've created so far except the very top part of the painting feels like it's lacking a little something. So um, this is not realism and I thought, you know what, there's a lot of contrast on the bottom, not so much on the top. Why don't I add a few little splatters of some of my uh, blackberry that I like so much. And I think that that's going to help pull everything together and then I'll be ready to call my painting done. I wasn't really 100% sure I wanted my lily to get those black dots on it so that's why I covered it but it might have been interesting for me not to cover the lily as well. I don't know. Um, regardless, I'm happy. <laughs> I really love how my little project turned out. Um, yeah, I love how the colors blend together. I love that iridescent paint on top of the different surface areas of the painting. Mostly what I love about this painting is that it helped create some very soothing and relaxing moments. Um, of creativity for me and that for me is always the gift of the creative process is creating those mindful moments. This painting process also helped me contemplate the word stillness, my word of the year. Stillness doesn't really have to be about completely stopping anything. Maybe it's just about moving more slowly and bringing more mindfulness into our life. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating! <laughs>